Here we are, guys, at the Museum of uh, Aviation here in Kiev. It's like the largest museum of airplanes and now a historical museum because it's all like famous for its Soviet uh, aircraft and uh, helicopters and all that kind of stuff. And it's also a place where they're hosting the, the car festival here. It's just basically a car festival that's been held here for the past five, six years. And uh, it's slowly been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's see if this year is an exception to the rule or not. Let's go! <laughs> We're going to buy a ticket. We don't have masks, we don't have masks, so we can't get inside. Oh my god! I thought it will worth it's worth to get in but it's not worth it. Hi guys, how are you? Where do we move? When? No. From where? Yeah. From from Canada. From Canada? From Toronto, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I live in Halifax, you know. You lived there? Yeah. For a long time? Eight, eight years, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time ago, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. And or something. I haven't been there, you know, it's, it's too disconnected from the rest of the country, right? How do you like Spain? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's shocking at first, but... Um, I don't know. Canada's not ideal either, right? It's not, it's yeah. like, no country is ideal. So I haven't, like I said, I haven't been to Halifax, I haven't been to East Coast. Zeal Unist, a 3207 is the model. Uh, I don't remember seeing this car in, uh, in Ukraine when I lived here. It did come out between 1991 and 1998, but I've never seen this sort of bus. It seems like it was, it was rare that these buses uh, were used because most people used trains, I think, back then. So it's kind of interesting, but it does look like um, a really old bus built on like 1960s technology, 1970s, 1980s technology, but apparently it was, um, it came out in 1990s. me you have a bunch of uh, zeals which are presidential limousines here uh, this one was like the one from the 90s and the 80s the one before that was volga which was like higher up uh, deputies and whatever but like the ones were like for the ministers right the, you had the big big limousines they're all from different eras from like the different decades where they were popular how how is this machine how is this machine can't swim i don't understand I hear old, old, old music, like Ni Minute Pakoya. It's like Soviet, Soviet uh, music. Yes, it's cool. It uh, like makes atmosphere here. It's Zaporozhets. It's Zaporozhets. I read about this. It's Zaporozhets. Yes. Zaporozhets. Uh, what blue? did you read about blue it? Blue or white? Blue. Yes. Obviously, it's blue. Wow, I want this car. <laughs> yeah, but it's not gonna drive it in real life. You just want it because it looks kind of cute. But imagine maintaining it, trying to fix it all the time, trying to like. 
But trying to very, drive with no air very, conditioning. It's very cozy, you know, because it's uh, like a little car. It was cost like 80,000 karbovantsiv. Uh, it's like maybe, I don't know, it's like maybe hryvni or something. Yeah, it's the it's it's like, old currency of Ukraine. But you think it was expensive or no? Who knows, because, I don't know, maybe, because it was like, uh, it was probably like dollars back then. And nobody had uh, that kind of money. But I think it's very, very fashionable, very fashionable car on, in this time. Maybe, but like I said, I think that carbovency was as much as a dollar, uh, and uh, people got maybe like two hundred dollars a month, a hundred dollars a month salary. It was very bad, mm -hmm. or a hundred carbovency a month. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. It mm -hmm. was even worse than it is now. So, uh, right now we are right in front of this car called Skoda Popular. I don't know, I guess it was popular back in 1933 when it came out uh, until 1946. So it was just like at the height of the war, before the war and uh, right after the war. So this car is what you probably expect to see some well-to-do Czechoslovak uh, people that probably like escaped Nazi persecution and they were very wealthy or it's like a little convertible that uh, had a tiny four-cylinder engine. Here, uh, do you know why this? Uh, why does it have this red uh, light in front of it? Why? 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 Yeah, why? Well, I'm asking you because you're you're a Soviet girl. I, I saw you were that born you here. know, dear. I saw that you know. But like driving in the dark, maybe. You need signal or no? I of don't know. To be honest, I think it's it's, too, it's like a siren to get people out of the way. Blue, blue, blue car again like this. It's a very beautiful color. Both of these cars behind us are DeSoto's uh, from 1939. They're American cars. And they managed to get them here in Ukraine. Behind us are basically other American cars like the Lincoln Town Car, the Oldsmobile from uh, late 90s and 2000s. So we are making our way along uh, the uh, American car section and um, there are more of them, of course. Same guy with the Ford Model T that was behind us. Overall, this show is really nice. I mean, what you have is you have um, areas divided into different um, sections where you have people that have BMWs, people have Mercedes, people that you have uh, older uh, European cars like Peugeot, Citroëns, uh, and obviously lots of Soviet cars like Lara's, uh, Zeal's of different uh, eras, Volga's of different eras, Moskvich's of different eras. And we even have the um, predecessor of Moskvich, or uh, sorry, the predecessor of the Lada, the famous Lada Zhiguli, the Fiat 125, 124, or whatever you want to call it. I think it was the 124. Right, dear? It was the Fiat 124. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, uh, we have the famous uh, Zim car behind us. It was behind us. Look how beautiful it is. It's um, Dodge. It's a Dodge, an early model here. And, uh, and then a bunch of Ladas. But a lot of are uh, the original one, and then you have another original one, and then you have... Uh, oh, watch out, watch out. Make sure you don't poke your eye out, little kid. He was not born in 1989, 
And this car is called the Lan Lan, Lan. from 1972. Lan. I don't know. It's like it's from 1972 and it was maybe maybe built for some like rich guy who like two door cars with two doors, like a coupe, uh, coupes. Dear, I don't think it for it's for rich guy because it's like poor inside. I see. Yeah, but it's from 1972 in Soviet Union. Come on, anybody who would have a nice coupe like this would be rich. Look, it's a coupe. Uh, back then people had the choice of a, of a Volga, Zhigli and that's about it. They, they had like no choice, right? Mm -hmm. Or Zaporozhets. So, I mean, this was like maybe some kind of a custom car for like the richest guy in Soviet Union. Доброго ранку. Ну що ж, розкажіть, як вам вдалося в такому автентичному стані чи то зберегти, чи то відновити автомобіль? Довгими зимніми вечорами, ночами ми то робили. В якому стані ви його знайшли і де? То була руїна. Руїна така, що якщо б ви десь йшли, воно в Карпів'ї щось терчало, ви б пройшли мимо від того. А ви не пройшли. All of these trucks are American because it says USA on all of these cars. So the car fest is over. The car fest is over and I uh, hope you guys liked it. The Soviet car fest is over. Well, it wasn't really Soviet. It was mostly Soviet, half Soviet. But I'm not gonna like say it was more Soviet than non-Soviet. Actually, maybe it was more Soviet than non-Soviet. I hope you guys liked the video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. When we do a maybe another video of something else, perhaps a different town or city. We'll see. Take care, guys. Take care, guys.